Imagine what it'd be like if we were really curious about each other. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Relational Spirituality, the weekly podcast of LargerStory.com, the podcast that sees all relationships as spiritual and all spiritual formation as relational. Now, here's your host for this week, Roseanne Moore. Hello, Larger Story friends. Welcome back to the Relational Spirituality Podcast. I'm your host today, Roseanne Moore, and I have a surprise guest. Rachel Crabb is with me today, and anybody who is familiar with our ministry knows and is excited, I know, to see her. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Rachel is the... Um, was a wife for over 52 years, Rachel? 54. And 54 <laughs> years of Dr. Larry Crabb. She is the mother of two, grandmother of five, soon to be great grandmother of one. <laughs> and she's she is many things. She's a wonderful teacher. She's a great hostess. She's a loving and thoughtful person. And she is also the columnist, the primary mover and shaker behind our column on Becoming Me Without You. Um, and she, Rachel, thank you for coming today. We're so happy to have you. I'm just happy to be here. I'm glad I could get on this. People who know Larry working on Zoom, and I always had to set him up on that to get it going. <laughs> and I would work at least an hour and a half ahead of time so we could do it. Roseanne and I had that today with yes. me. I'm not up to date on the tech since he's been gone to over two years and it's hard to get on again. So yeah. I'm learning. Yes. And we're using a different system now. So that was a whole new learning curve. Although being part of the time was me getting set up. So <laughs> but you're so good at this. Roseanne. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. And I do, I want to start with your blog column, because I think it's a good starting place for you sharing what the journey has been like for you since Larry's gone to be with the Lord. The title of that blog column is Becoming Me Without You. And share more about that. Share more about that journey. It was when uh, Roseanne and, and Carlene were working on a strategy plan. They invited me down to be, spend some time with them while they were working together. And I said, what do you girls have in mind? They said, we'd like you to write something for larger story. We think we need to have uh, a grief column. And so far we've had, we've had mostly widowers and widows talking to us. And I introduced them and they're all friends of mine or are becoming friends of mine. And then we put in, we had, wonderful person who had a book, Tracy Pratt, who wrote a book called Anticipatory Grief. And that's what I truly lived for 25 years because Larry was diagnosed with cancer, islet cell gastronoma, which starts, is in the pancreas. He was diagnosed with that in 1997. And, and he passed away in 21, 2021. And there were uh, 25 years of anticipatory grief because I was called into the hospital several times with the first round of pancreas, pancreas surgery. Mm -hmm. And, and that was, I was called in three times for that to tell me he probably had less than six hours to live. And so every time, and we're all dying, but we knew he was dying. Mm -hmm. 25 years, unbelievable. 25 years. And in the last month of his life, I think he was so productive. He was writing things up until he was laying in the hospice bed for eight days. He was still writing, wrote a note to all our neighbors mm -hmm. to say, be happy for me. Mm -hmm. I'm in paradise. Mm -hmm. And I want you to be there with me. He wrote mm -hmm. that to the neighbors where we lived. And it was really that just really hit. And then I was given a book called Becoming Me Without You. And I thought I lived a lot of time becoming me without him because there were lots of things that I had to do. So I was in preparation for things. So now it's learning to be me. And so I've had two widowers 
that's just been fun. And the several of us have been widows. And then I had a mother of a, a mother and father of a daughter. And I have another one of those coming up real soon. Mm -hmm. And I have in the can something about a mother's death. So it's not just for us, but we did feel we were special. And there was, I didn't realize how different it was. Death is death, but death of your other half yeah. is your half a person. We made reference to the fact that you had been married for over for 54 years, but before that, you had been dating for what, eight years, six years, something like that? We knew each other from the time we were 10 and we didn't start dating each other or sitting together in church services or things like that till we were 12. Okay. So we your whole history. life. Yeah. He was a part of, he pretty was much your whole life. whole life. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what is, what has that looked like how did you get through you talked about the anticipatory grief and we're reading soul talk right now in this quarter yes. we're focused on that and larry opens the book talking about when he got the initial diagnosis and it was not good and and the sort of existential crisis that he had yes. it, with he, he with had that. many of those yes <laughs> <laughs> that immediate one right after yes. getting that news. And then, like you said, he went on for a long time and each time, each time facing that and having him pull out of it, I would think, I know for me, when I realized, okay, this is really, he really is going home this time. Yes. It was, there was a sense of, oh, wow, this is actually happening. Now what? Yes. I had several of his friends would say, Something's going on in our life right now. And the, picked up the phone to call Larry. Mm -hmm. Because that would have been my first phone call. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's the stories I've gotten from many mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And even I, who know he's gone, I really know it. But I know also, how can I be so sad when he's ecstatically happy? Because that's all he wanted. He was becoming a person. He always, in fact, friends have called and said, did you read his 66 love letters? Did you read what he said? And I'm going to make this up, but I think it was first and second Timothy. And I did go read it. And they said, all he talked about was heaven. Mm -hmm. He just talked about heaven. He was very heavenly minded. And yeah. At the end, what? he was like, don't you dare pray that I'll be healed. <laughs> I know. I I'm ready to go. <laughs> Don't you dare say that. And, and um, people had quoted that. They said, oh, yeah. He would just say, I want to see, I want to get home. I want to get home. He was tired of being poked and prodded. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And we just knew that our weeks were filled with doctor's visits, as many as five a week. Mm -hmm. And when he was in chemo, it was even, it was New Year's Day. Christmas day mm -hmm. and it was arsenic. Mm -hmm. but yeah, we knew, mm -hmm. but didn't realize that he was probably filled with all kinds of blisters inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by the time. And he had lost so much weight. Yeah. He had lost so much weight, but I, I do, we won our column and my, the editor for that column is Jeannie Sterling and she and her husband lived with us. She tells me it's at least a total of three months while he was being treated for prostate cancer as a result of Agent Orange in Vietnam. Oh, and yeah. he was on the registry as a person who was got that from Vietnam, from the Agent mm -hmm. Orange. Mm -hmm. And so they lived with us and he was treated at the VA. And when he passed away, Larry went out sick though he was. And I went a week or two after Larry, uh, Al's death and spent time with her. And we became very close at that time. Um, but I didn't get it yet. I didn't mm -hmm. understand what it was to be mm -hmm. a widow. Mm -hmm. And if you read the first blog, I think we did. It was a letter to Larry from uh, a letter to us, my mm -hmm. boys and me, about the Larry missing mm -hmm. his friend. 
Mm -hmm. And he was a widower by that time, I think it's 16 years when Larry passed away. Mm -hmm. And Jeannie and I, actually, she came in for Larry's birthday. She came to town and Paul and Mary Beth Niger came to town. I had some people in for Larry's first birthday in heaven. Mm -hmm. And my son asked a question the other day. He said, Mom, I wonder if you celebrate his biological birth or his rebirth. <laughs> the questions you come up from. He mm -hmm. said, I wonder which one they're celebrating in heaven. Do you think mm -hmm. they're celebrating dad's biological birth or do they celebrate the day that they know that he became a born again Christian? Mm -hmm. And that was an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I said, you study it, son, and come up with the answer. <laughs> But they were here and John, I got John's letter on the birthday. And that's all in the blog part that I got the letter from him. And I said to her, she said, he gets it. Mm -hmm. He understands what it is because it's a different thing. Celebrating holidays are not anything except that my, my son, Kenny, who lives around the corner from me, told his dad he would never be away from me. He's going to be away for my birthday coming up. He's going to be away. And I said, I can do it. I can do it with, no, mom, I don't know. I don't know if we should go. No, I don't know. <laughs> I said, yeah, you're great. So anyway, she read it and I said, let's call John and thank him for this letter. So Paul and Mary Beth had left by that time. And Jeannie was there with me and we called John and we talked and chatted and laughed. And so the next morning I said, I think we're supposed to date John on the phone. And honestly, we have the best time, the three of us. And it's so nice to, uh, for me, it's for Jeannie, a brand new person. But uh -huh. John was very active in the first church Larry and I went to 57 years ago when we went to Champaign, Illinois. So John and Sharon, and there are even some stories in that Tom and Jenny Board met at a potluck that John and Sharon had sponsoring a college group oh, at the wow. University of Illinois <laughs> in the chapel in the church that we went the chapel we went to, and and so he, J Tom and Jenny Board met through them. It's just amazing That's in amazing. the Christian world. Yeah, we had Tom Ward on just a few weeks ago as one of our guests on here. So that's an interesting backstory. Yes. <laughs> For him. It's still John. It's still John Garrett. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was fun. Uh, mm -hmm. That's neat. Yeah. What, thinking about the whole issue of soul talk and how you spent time with Jeannie and you were there for her and you got close, but you didn't really understand what it was like. What do you think now in, in the way that you talk with people who are grieving, what's different in the kind of conversations with somebody who's in that place of raw grief? It, I think I knew at the time that I want to go back and apologize to anyone who's become a widow <laughs> that I've talked to. Mm -hmm. I want to apologize for some of the stupid things I said. I think we all feel that way when we go through I, a loss. You know, I really and, do. And yeah. I said that to Jeannie. So she wrote, was it two months ago? I think we had a, or three months ago, we had something about, I'm sorry. I'm sorry was what she wrote about. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love that people want to help. I love that. But I was always one, what can I do for you? As opposed to, and then I read a story when I was younger, and I should have caught on to this, where someone had passed away in a family and the next door neighbor came over. It was back in the days when you had to polish your shoes. The next door neighbor came over with a shoe polishing kit and said, I'm going to polish everyone's shoes for the funeral. Huh. Because in those days, we didn't go to church on Sundays without right. our shoes polished. Huh. And so we all had the polishing kits and you worked on your shoes and you uh -huh. And so someone said they went and did that. And I thought of that. I thought, I read that when I was probably in my 20s. Why didn't I take it to heart? Where you just, when you, and Jeannie wrote a whole article that I mm -hmm. thought she did such a great job on 
everyone who's written for us has done a wonderful job and we've all had different experiences. Mm -hmm. But Jeannie talked about people saying to her, what can I do? And you're never going to call them back Mm -hmm. to ask them, Mm -hmm. hey, I thought of something for you to do. And so she gave us a lot of good ideas. And I think that really makes a difference when just out of the clear blue, someone does something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, You certainly did that for me recently when I had my appendectomy, you showed up with the best chicken salad literally I've ever had in my life. (laughs) And I am a connoisseur. It is a chicken salad is one of my favorite things ever. (laughs) And I didn't know that. I thought, thought, oh, I have to get, I'm going down, I'm going to go down to see my neighbors from Boca Raton, Florida down there. And I thought down your direction. And I thought, I just have to drop some chicken salad. You have to know, I don't cook anymore. I eat dinner. I, eat dinner. I really feel honored that <laughs> I, do. I do that. Oh. I, I, it, that's another thing. It's hard cooking for one. Yeah. Yeah. It really is. And Kenny and Leslie have just, I'm, I'm just an extra person at their place. And he usually has, his kids always have extra friends. But, and he said, I said, I come every night. He says, no, mom, you only come about five out of seven. (laughs) I told him recently that I'm going to only come three out. (laughs) And so far I've been there three times this week. So (laughs) I guess. Maybe you'll start next week, right? (laughs) I will because he's away. They're away. So I will have maybe the whole week. Other two girls. But anyway, it's just the practical Mm -hmm. of saying what you're going to do. And if they say, oh, we're fine, that's fine. But I told Anita Grayson, I have a special relationship Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I do with your boys too, I think. Uh (laughs) Yes. They, her kids help me a lot. They come up and empty storage (laughs) closets for me and they just are wonderful kids. And I just love feeding them something or giving them a gift card to go eat on their way home. (laughs) And I just love having Roseanne's kids because Roseanne's done such a wonderful job with those kids. (laughs) They sure love Miss Rachel. (laughs) (laughs) It's just fun to have them around. And they get so excited when I bring, when I would bring something and hand it to them. Uh Uh So it was just, it was really good for me to have to make that. It really was. Mm -hmm. Thanks for letting me have that opportunity. (laughs) <laughs> and I'm glad to see you. I have not seen you in person since you're out. Because when I'd come, you right. would be out. Of I was house. asleep. Yeah. yeah. I was wiped out. And I was you napping, were. I think. <laughs> I, I think I carried things in with the kids. But I don't remember two times not seeing you. Yeah. 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 Anyhow, it's nice to see you. <laughs> yes, it is. We need to get together in person. I know. So soon. We will. But- Yes. Yeah. After September. I'm, she's making reference to the fact that we just put a bid on a house. So (laughs) we're hoping to move in September, (laughs) but I want to, along those lines, because you weren't just doctor, I don't mean just, but even before, uh, before Larry's homecoming, you had your own identity. You're an author. You've written several books, one on hospitality. You contributed with Larry to some devotional books and to some books on marriage. Listen In, you wrote with two friends. It was a book. I was going to say it's a book for women, but really it's a book for everybody. It's three women's voices. Guys call me about that. Yeah. Mention it. And that was, that was sweet. That was sweet. They said they were recommending it to their women, but Uh they said they pastors. Uh a pastor I can think of who it is and he said yeah we did that book in a it was a men's group and we whipped through it but he said it we enjoyed it and I thought uh, that was sweet of him to say I think any husband who wants to better love his wife that's that book is a good resource and I think also there are things just for being a human the way that you had conversations, the way that you engaged with your own story, that's not gender specific in terms of everybody has a story that influences how they're living today. And that book is a really good model of how meaningful conversations with engaged 
people who are engaged in listening and loving you through even the hard parts of your story, how it makes a difference in the way that you see yourself, the way that you see God at work in the hard places of your life. It's a great book. It's a really good book. And we will have a link for that in the show notes for anybody who wants to check it out. But you had written those things. You had been on mission boards. You had done other things. What are you, I, I'm, I'm setting you up because I already know the answer to this. What are some of the things you're doing now? <laughs> how is How have things changed? You spent a lot of time traveling with Larry yes. also and doing the SSDs and the next steps before the spirit, schools of spiritual direction. What, would you share with our listeners what what's life look like now? Because you haven't stopped. You haven't stopped being Rachel <laughs> in the middle of this. <laughs> It's funny because I have a ministry in my apartments and I really do. It's wonderful. The doors open for me to have this ministry. The first party I had was the longest day of the year. And all of a sudden it's like the Holy Spirit said to me, tell them, introduce them to your husband. And so I introduced them to Larry on their way out the door mm -hmm. by, I wrote up, it was so sweet. I wrote up a story about who Larry was mm -hmm. and where he is mm -hmm. and, and that I was doing this gathering because mm -hmm. I had read something that Larry said. Mm -hmm. And it was like, Larry told me, reach out to others. Mm -hmm. and, and so I put that in there and then I put the letter that I wrote mm -hmm all about introducing Larry to them. And on the way, when they were leaving the longest night party at 10 o'clock, they said, speech from our hostess. <laughs> and I said, no, I said, I'm just so glad you're here. And I said, on the way out, on the entryway table, there's an envelope, no names on the envelope, but I want to tell you about my husband. Mm -hmm. And that I'm doing this party. It's my new normal. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time I've had more than six or eight people. Mm -hmm. in. And I said, I was a person who liked having people in. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is the first time. And here there are almost 30 of you mm -hmm. on my little back deck. <clears throat> and I said, I want you to know who my husband is. Mm -hmm. And on the way out, they picked it up. The next day I had six people call me. People show up at my door crying Aww. about how they wish they knew him. And I was taking care of a woman upstairs who's just a young woman. And she called me from the hospital that she had a stroke. Oh, wow. And so I took that upon because they call me the mayor of the <laughs> apartments. However, the other day someone called me the queen. So I think I'd rather go with the queen than the mayor. But... I went up to take care of her dog named Elvis. And of course that was, I was partial toward Elvis. <laughs> those in the background and on her refrigerator, she had hanging the grief share daily that I had given them where it said, when Larry Crabb said, sometimes when you're feeling down and you're feeling low, the best thing you can do is reach out to someone else. Mm -hmm. So it was mm -hmm. to not get wrapped up mm -hmm. in yourself. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's what my husband told me to do. That's why we have this party tonight. Mm -hmm. And it was hanging on her refrigerator with the letter right under it. And it happened to be a week before Jan June 21st, where I had another solstice party this year. Mm -hmm. And it was hanging on her refrigerator. Mm -hmm. No way did I even think mm -hmm. that she would hang that anywhere mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or she would say it. But that was just one person. Impression. And I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm now in the midst of a, another domestic situation in the here. And, but I have good times on the airplane. <laughs> I went to see Tripp and Judy and from Toronto to Quebec City. I met a, a French teacher who happens to be Quebecois. And she happens to move to here to live next to her son in 
just down the road from me. Uh -huh. oh, we had lunch together yesterday. <laughs> so we're so planning good. on meeting a lot. Um, I just think no matter what situation you're in, you have to make God look good. Because mm -hmm. right now, people are trying to make him look so bad. Mm -hmm. And the Christians aren't helping. Mm -hmm. And there's something about, I heard someone say one time, uh, Larry used to do this. I'll just say what Larry said. I won't say what someone else said. Larry used to always at the end of an SSD do that passage of the dry bones mm -hmm. and saying that he's going to raise up an army of dry bones. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I feel. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a, a group of dry bones ready to be raised up mm -hmm. and we have to be raised up to make God look good. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's what it's just this past week. I was saying to Roseanne, I said, I get blindsided every time. In the grief share program, they call it ambushed. I opened up, I, I did the grief share daily readings from the grief share. And there was this one this week, this past week, number three, day 316, and day, another day that's in this pile somewhere here. There were two devotionals in this last month. This is day 323 and 316. I'm reading along to this little be involved in others life. You need to find the courage to get deeply involved in other people's lives and experience the mess and frustration, the sense of impotence, the sense of not knowing what to do, says Dr. Larry Crabb. <laughs> And it says in, the, in day 316, and that's 300 and, um, 328 days. And it says, Dr. Larry Crabb says, in the field of the soul, there are no professional surgeons. There are only caring Christians. So mm -hmm. I think that's a biblical thing for us to realize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Soul talk. And you can't go in and hit him over the head with the gospel. I mm -hmm. used to say, I loved what Francis Schaeffer said. He said, if I was spending next to someone on an airplane for the first 45 minutes, I'd talk about life. Mm -hmm. And the last 15, mm -hmm. I'd talk about afterlife, mm -hmm. the afterlife. Mm -hmm. And Francis Schaeffer said that one time. So I'm on an airplane. I talk about <laughs> life. <laughs> I talk about life, yeah. but it was really interesting. The gal I've been talking to is a wonderful believer. Did not realize that, knew it by the time I got off the plane, <laughs> but by meeting her yesterday, it was absolutely a treat to me. So I get the blessing by reaching out to others. It get, it. It really is a matter of the Lord showing up in the middle. And I think sometimes we talk about ministering to others in a way that it's, we think we're being unselfish, but it's almost paternalistic. But what you're describing, I think, is what happens when the spirit really is at work, because there's a blessing on both sides. Like it, it life gets stirred for both parties when we're really following the spirit instead of having our own agenda. And, and so you show up, you offer who you are and God shows up in the middle of it and you walk away encouraged as well. <laughs> well and I attend a Bible study at another church, but I, I'm leading the Bible study and it's been great and wonderful with two other gals and the women in the Bible study say, oh, you girls are an answer to prayer. We're all three new mm -hmm. to the church. But I, I really just day to day interactions. I like the interactions. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I'm cut out. I'm old. I don't know if I'm cut out to be <laughs> the Bible study person in the future, but I surely have enjoyed the contacts with people. Uh -huh. And it's really good. They say they know um, you're known um, to know your future. You say to a kid to know your future, look at your friends, mm -hmm. to know your future, look at your friends. Mm -hmm. And it's the friends that'll pull you along or the friends that'll bring you down. Mm -hmm. And the teenagers have to learn that. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that my, my son Ken's been saying to his girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to see your future? 
look at mm-hmm. your friends. Mm-hmm. Now, my future's only heaven. <laughs> There's not, I'm going to be 79 in a few days. And I miss Larry like terrible. But I said to Roseanne, someone had said this to me in an email. Is it an amazing how our loved one can be so ecstatically happy mm-hmm. who's gone mm-hmm. and we're miserable Mm -hmm. (laughs) some days. Mm -hmm. It's been a hard time. Spent a week with Tripp Tripp and Judy and five days alone with just the three of us. Mm -hmm. And normally we started in 1984, the four of us all over the world, really. Mm -hmm. Uh, We started in Paris in 1984 Mm -hmm. and we were trying to rehearse all the places we've been and we couldn't name them all. Uh, we could name incidents that happened and we laughed and we cried. Mm-hmm. But I just think it's something to do. You have to move on. I'm here. And I said to someone, if Larry could see me, I picture seeing him mm-hmm. and what he's doing. And that song I can only imagine mm-hmm. makes a big difference. But if Larry could see me, he'd say, that's just like Rachel. <laughs> because that's exactly how we wrote our mission statement. And he's have a twinkle in his eye as he said it yeah, and a big say, smile. Just like Rachel. Yeah, she's out there <laughs> taking care of the sick. <laughs> Take it. And she's out there and that's what her gifting mm-hmm. is. It's mm-hmm. I'm out there trying to make God look good. Mm-hmm. But it's not easy. There are just sometimes I don't feel like it. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like making God look good. Mm-hmm. I want to have a pity party. Then mm-hmm. I will. Thank you so much, Rachel, for sharing with us and and for for being who you are, even as you deal with the loss of Larry of not being here. Thank you for being continuing to be become you. <laughs> Becoming the real me. Yeah. It's times now. I'm getting ready to be in a Job Bible study. And of course I love Larry's stuff on Joe. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And their favorite things in soul talk. And I don't even know if it's soul talk where he talks about turning your chairs. Mm -hmm. I love the turning of the chairs image. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember what's in the books, Mm -hmm. except for the girl who yesterday said to me, I was in my early twenties and she said, Oh, she said, I read his book. And it just really impacted me. She said, I can't even think of the title. I said, it was called Inside Out. <laughs> I said, it was called Inside Out. Yeah. Because uh, she was just telling me about, it was gut-wrenching. It was all that was going on. <laughs> and I said, that was Inside Out. So I, I remember those things, but I cannot, how many times have I heard him do Job devotional? The Job, and I thought, I'm going into Job. I have well, to. One of the things we've been talking about recently is as we're developing new thing, new offerings for a larger story is all of those devotional materials that he had from the, all of his notes from the SSD and next step. And, and wanting I to still, and I may have those. given it over to the, you guys who work with this material. He did a home Bible study in Boca Raton, Florida, and he did whole books of the Bible. And he sat in the middle of a living room and dining room in the doorway mm-hmm. of that on a bar stool and taught both sides of the room <laughs> at friends of our house, of our, of our neighborhood. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And he taught that Bible study for years. And the guy recorded every Bible study. Oh, wow. And I don't know if those ever got out to you all yet. Um, I don't know. They are definitely they were in my collection of stuff uh-huh. and I've tried to, I keep saving things to give Kip because he has, you all have ideas yes. in your strategic planning. <laughs> and I, every time I turn around, I find another note from him. He was a note writer yeah. in the morning. He would leave me a note that says, I love you gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And he would leave the note and he would sign L mm-hmm. and that was the best you could read of the signature. <laughs> I've had people call me and take a picture of what he wrote in their book. Could you tell me what this said? (laughs) I have wonderful memories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was the, he was really the love of my life. Mm -hmm. 
And in 25 years, I lived with, is he going to leave today? Is he going to be called home today? Mm-hmm. But he was called home in a beautiful way. Mm-hmm. He, he chose to give up his medicine, mm-hmm. give up all the things that were keeping him plugging along. Mm-hmm. And he said, I'm tired of being poked and prodded. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. want to go home. Mm-hmm. And I'd say, oh, he was so heavenly minded. He was no earthly good that he <laughs> would just hate what's happening in this world today. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't be able to stand it. Mm-hmm. And God took him at a wonderful mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. And it was the right time. He gave us mm-hmm. 25 years more than we ever thought we would have. 25 years. Mm-hmm. Yes, he was sick when he got on speaking places. Yes, he went places sick. Yes, a lot of people have seen him very sick. He wouldn't give up. Yeah. He wouldn't give up. And that was the neat thing because he didn't want to be a person who ever quit on God. And he taught us how to die, how a Christian Mm -hmm. dies. He really did. I think I told this story before. My brother said to me, sing sing Jesus loves me to him every night when Mm -hmm. when you and Kenny pray with him. Sing Jesus loves me. We sang Jesus loves me and One night I was alone and Kenny had already left and it was Wednesday before he passed away and I was singing Jesus loves me. Mm -hmm. And he said, Rachel, I know he does. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't he take me home? Mm -hmm. And I said, because you're teaching us all how a believer dies Mm -hmm. and how they're ready to go. And that's what he taught. One of our granddaughters said it the other day. Mm -hmm. She said, whew. I couldn't give up on, on Christianity mm-hmm. as much as I have these teenage things in my s- system to give up on. Mm-hmm. She said, cause I, I watched pop die. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. Mm-hmm. And I thought, Oh, he taught us how to die. Yeah. 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 But it's been a wonderful lesson. It's been a, a wonderful thing. And it's just lonely as all get outs. Yeah. I think it's funny because I, in Revelation, it talks in what, at one point about the prayers of the saints and the context oh. indicates, it seems to me, the context indicates it's believers who are in the presence of the Lord. And, and so in the golden bowl before the yeah. throne. <laughs> yes. It's Revelation 4, 8 or 8, 4. It's something yeah. like that. And so I think, I really believe that he prays more like with more joy and more power for you now mm-hmm. than he ever did as faithful mm-hmm. as as faithfully as he did throughout his life in praying for people and for you and i have wondered what it was like for you because you had your morning prayer that you each prayed every morning and i've wondered what what that was like for you to not have your partner in the morning to, to pray his half. I tried Um, doing it by myself for a while. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a woman who has faithfully followed Larry's teaching, her name is Marilee. And Marilee, one morning, she had no idea that Larry made my latte every morning before he went out. Mm -hmm. He got it all ready and all I had to do was push the button and I made a latte. (laughs) <laughs> and I understand from Jimmy that he was very proud of making a latte every morning <laughs> and getting it ready. And by the time he'd come home from breakfast, because remember, he ate breakfast out every morning. And by the time he came home, I would have had my two cups of latte, latte and he would clean the pot. My friend Marilee sent me a cup that said, in the morning when I rise, just give me Jesus. Mm-hmm. I see it on my shelf over there. I always kept it next to the coffee pot. I took a picture of it and sent it to her. Mm -hmm. And I said, you'll never realize Mm -hmm. that's what he did every morning. Mm -hmm. And now it's just Jesus and me. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to clean the latte (laughs) pot. Because he always, he would wash it and it was mine stained. And then (laughs) he would just take care of that latte pot when he came in. We'd pray our common prayer Mm -hmm. and the prayer that we prayed for 30, 30 years. We'd pray that prayer and, and he'd come find me in the house, pray that prayer, go clean the coffee pot. (laughs) And just those little things that 
I took for granted. Sure. Right, right. But in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. Mm-hmm. And I'll do the latte myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I live in an apartment building that has coffee bar in the front uh, office. And so people carry their pots up there. No one makes a coffee anymore. I do make a latte because I like it. I do make my own because I like decaf. <laughs> and they only have caffeine up there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so thanks. Thank Susan. you so much, Rachel, for spending this time and sharing with our listeners. <laughs> anyway, oh. uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, blessings to all of you who are larger story supporters, backers, prayers, people who support this ministry. It's really something. I wish all the people on there knew him personally. A lot of people do that are on there. But I've have I have some people that I'm meeting that are now saying, Oh, we're on larger story. So they'll, <laughs> they'll hear this story. Um looking forward to uh seeing what the Lord does in everyone's life in yes. the next little bit. Yes. Talk to you soon. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for joining us today at the Relational Spirituality Podcast, your place to to belong, to become, and to be known. And if you want to um, check out some of the books that we talked about today, the links are in the show notes. And we look forward to having you back next week. Thanks so much. If you like what you heard today, hit the like button just below. Then come back by subscribing to our podcast channel. For more resources on relational spirituality, go to our website at largerstory.com.